Good morning, everyone. I'm Jim Chiquetta, co-founder and CTO of Vitovation. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, some of you may have been able to come to NAB. Uh, uh, some of you may have not been able to travel for various reasons. So the purpose of these uh, three webinars that we're doing, short little webinars, I'll try to be short. I have a bad habit of going long, but I'll try to keep it short as possible. Uh, just for those of you that couldn't make it, um, in in talking to customers before the show, you know, we called customers, texted customers, you know, are you coming to NAB? And there was a common theme that it wasn't so much, uh, um, you know, fear of COVID or travel restrictions. Uh, people were working. People were busy. And I'm hoping that's a good sign that that um, people didn't have the time to go to the show. They're like, I'm rebuilding a control room. I'm rebuilding a studio. Uh, I'm on a production for the next six weeks. So I think things are slowly getting back to normal. And, and I, I hope I'm I'm correct in that assumption. So uh, for whatever reason, uh, you, if you couldn't make it to NAB, uh, uh, my colleague Rick and I spent a lot of time in the uh, Avi West Hayvision booth. Uh, for those of you that may not have heard the news, our, our premier bonded cellular partner, Avi West, got uh, purchased by uh, High Vision. And the plan is to integrate, uh, you know, first mile connectivity over cellular with uh, the SRT and some of the infrastructure video over IP and streaming technology of high vision. So it's very exciting. Avi West, their protocol is called SST, similar to SRT, but SST is great to bond the connection to go over an unmanaged network for that first mile, that challenging mile. So I think it's a great addition to the high vision uh, offering, uh, the, the marriage of the two technologies and the two companies together. Um, I had the honor of uh, speaking, I think it's for the sixth time uh, on a panel at NAB. The uh, um, panel committee chose me to speak about uh, how 5G uh, simplify live remote production workflows, how bonded cellular and 5G helped during the pandemic. And one of the, actually the first professional sporting event that came back uh, after the lockdown in May of 20, uh, 2020 uh, was an event that uh, Vitovation and Avi West uh, made possible, and that's with the PGA. So let me get into this presentation. So what, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to quickly go through my presentation. It's about at-home production, Remy production uh, over uh, the public internet and bonded cellular. I'll then close with... Uh, some some videos and some slides and uh, my colleague Fallon will hand out some data sheets on some of the new products but all of this kind of ties into the live production uh, workflow but particularly over unmanaged networks cellular and, and the public internet so going to learn how uh, broadcasters like the PGA are using this technology we're going to talk about how 5g is helping a uh, common question we get is like, well, is 5G going to put bonded cellular out of business? I always use the analogy like lanes on the freeway. I, I grew up in New York. Uh, traffic is a whole nother level here in California. So every time they add another lane to the freeway, the traffic doesn't get any better. So 5G is going to give us more capacity, but we're going to use up that pipe. So we're still going to need multiple connections. We're still going to need bonding. Uh, the big benefit of 5G I see is, is lowering latency. Uh, and with video transmission, the quicker we can transmit the lower latency, that's important. So let's dive right into it. Well, uh, one other thing too we're gonna cover is um, we particularly uh, are good at the Avi West technology really differentiates itself for multi-camera. And why is that important? Well, if you have multiple cameras over an unmanaged connection, such as cellular or public internet, the cameras could get out of sync, they can drift. And then you can't cut a live show if the video and audio are out of sync and the lip sync's out of sync. So that's an important topic we'll discuss. So when the pandemic struck, I, I mean, we've been promoting 
the the idea of uh, producing a, an entire show, uh, a multi-camera live event over cellular and the public internet for years. I mean, we did the the Ryder Cup years ago. We did some lower level uh, PGA events, fishing tournaments. So I, I think the common consensus is like COVID and the lockdown didn't invent new technology. It just accelerated, accelerated things that we already had. Yes, there were some new additions. Um, nobody knew what Zoom was before before COVID. Now everyone, you know, Zoom is a verb, but let me Zoom you, let me Zoom you. Um, we run our whole business now on Slack. So it's like, let me Slack you, you know, that, you know for, for collaboration. So, so, you know, tools that were already out there now uh, 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 have been put into widespread use. So before, before the lockdown, we were always promoting the idea of sending less people to, to, the, to the production site. Uh, so that, hence this graphic, you know, with, with a, a reduction in staff, uh, saving time, saving money. Uh, one of the biggest challenges post COVID now, a lot of people have gotten out of the workforce or have switched industries or have retired. So there's a shortage of personnel and doing an at home production, you know, where you have less of a footprint on site and your skilled workers are back at, at the uh, master control. Uh, an instant replay operator, instead of doing one or two games a week, now can do one or two games a day. Uh, they could do games in different time zones. So your knowledge worker, your director, your TD, your video engineer, uh, producers, et cetera, uh, if they don't have to travel as part of their job, uh, they, they, they can be more productive. They can do more than one event in the same day. They could do an event in New York earlier in the day and then a, a, a cover a game in the afternoon in, in L.A., um, I apologize, uh, some customers of mine, some of these vehicles might be yours. Um, this is just for marketing approach, um, uh, you know, market, marketing uh, uh, visual, but really what's happening is the truck is not being eliminated, the truck's being moved. So in the case of the PGA, instead of sending one or two trailers to a PGA event, uh, PGA is bringing these feeds back to their uh, uh, master control in St. Augusta, and uh, they don't have master control capacity. They don't have enough uh, production switchers. So the Game Creek or NEP truck, instead of going to the venue, is going to, to, to the studio. It's, it's in the parking lot. It's literally in the parking lot. Uh, at PGA headquarters. So that capacity is just moving. And then an operator can can stay in the same truck and do multiple events during the day, or there's trucks in parallel doing uh, simultaneous events in different parts of the country, different parts of the world. So the, maybe the, the size of trucks are, are, are changing. You know, trucks are going to be more IP now. Uh, we're going to need a good internet connection to the truck. Again, it makes sense to have it in a central location. So uh, the trucks are not going away, but uh, maybe they're just being used in a different capacity. So back to May of 2020, uh, the, the local health department, we're all in lockdown. They decided that uh, 50, 50 people was the magic number to allow on the golf course. And uh, one of the players, uh, uh, his dad is a member of uh, the Seminole Golf Club, and Seminole is not usually on, on the PGA circuit. It's a private club. So, you know, if this was Pebble Beach, uh, Pebble Beach probably has a, a level three or uh, 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 the switch has a circuit in there. There's a fiber coming in there because uh, they do, you know, multiple events during a year, you know, so that there's infrastructure. So the only real choice would have been satellite, but we wanted to try. The PGA had been using uh, our bonded cellular, had gotten good results. Like, look, this is the perfect event. Let, let's do the whole production uh, via multi-camera bonded cellular. And, and it worked. You know, we were allowed 50 people. That included the golfers, the crew, the officials. Um, professional golfers had to carry their own bags the poor guys you know they, they couldn't have a caddy there was no uh no quota for caddies uh now in this particular project it just so happened that we were operating in the same state you know seminole is uh, down in uh, juno beach and saint augustine is in northern florida 
but uh, some events we do, it can be 10,000 miles away. It, it doesn't matter whether it's a couple of hundred feet or you know a couple hundred yards to, to tens of thousands of miles away. Some of the fishing tournaments we do, uh, the truck is in town nearby. They set up a stage, they have fans, they have an audience. Uh, some of the on-air talent is on the stage. So there's uh, uh, in, in nearby uh, uh, a fan experience, but the, the, the bass fishing boats are out on the lake going over cellular, hitting the public internet, and then coming into the truck in town via an internet connection. So that there's a, variations of the workflow, you know, at home, uh, may not, your home might be a truck nearby, your home might be your real home. Uh, you, you, the technology facilitates you working from home. Mike Tirico uh, didn't feel comfortable traveling to Florida to be the uh, one of the on-air color uh, uh, commentators for the for the tournament. So bonded cellular technology was used to loop him into the production. And you know, cellular, as we all know, there is some latency. You know, there there's uh, anywhere from half a second to eight tenths of a second of latency. Uh, we're constantly uh, working on improving that. Uh, the newer products from Avi West can do uh, 300 to 500 milliseconds uh, of latency. So uh, we're, we're getting very close to, to you know, uh, fiber connectivity types latency. So here's, here's a picture of the course. So there were six live cameras uh, on, uh, you know, two in the tee box, two on the fairway, two on the greens, and they kind of rotated, you know, the, the two cameras on the tee follow the first group out to the green and they kind of went in a circle or, or they you know, went in the loop as another crew came through or another group came through. Then there was some uh, uh, parabolic microphones uh, catching the audio on the course. So there were about eight or nine cameras capturing the same, uh, uh, same event, the same sporting event, and then a couple of dozen microphones all open in the same area and you can imagine if the the video was out of step or if the vi audio there was a lip sync problem or a video genlock issue you couldn't cut a, a live show there was no with live there's no opportunity to fix things in post so this kind of gives a picture of why it's so important to have everything in perfect sync perfect genlock then uh, this slide shows you know what is the magic um you know, uh, SST now is going to be uh, merged into SRT, uh, uh, you know, in the cloud. You know, Avi West has a strong cloud solution. Uh, High Vision has a strong cloud solution with SST. So uh, with SRT, I'm sorry. So SST will get it to the cloud or get it to the studio. SRT will be used for distribution between facilities or, or from the cloud to your facility. So uh, that's the magic, you know, the SST is what does the bonding. We can use satellite, you know, BGAN or satellite. We could use an internet connection, an IP connection. We can use Wi-Fi or cellular. One common question we get asked is, what's that one thing that makes Avi West work better? Well, you know, we've, one of our bass fishing tournament production companies, they, they had another vendor's uh, product. It's, it's one of the top vendors in a bass boat next to uh, an Avi West demo uh, setup. And uh, the goal was uh, the unit was set to five megabits. So five megabits per second was the desired video bit rate. The competing product was fluctuating, you know, 500K, maybe a meg, 500K, maybe 1.2 meg. The Avi West field encoder was pinned at five. Perfect textbook. So like, why? What, what, is, what is the magic? Uh, is there some kind of voodoo? Or do you have a, a land connection going through the water underneath the boat? What, what's the trick? You know, we weren't on site. There's, no, there's really no trick. And it's a lot of little things. Um, starts with better antennas. Um, the, the cellular device that has the strongest signal wins at the tower. So if you're in a, a, a ballpark or a stadium with 80,000 fans all on their phones, if uh, the Avi West bonded cellular comes into the venue, it has a stronger connection to the tower, it's going to get priority. So better, better antennas and then better modems. And what makes a better modem? You know, better radio, better sensitivity, but it's the bands. Uh, Avi West uses modems that 
connect to all the bands globally, every single band. In older products, two modems would be tweaked for Verizon, two modems would be tweaked for AT&T, two for T-Mobile, and then even Sprint. You know, Sprint now is part of T-Mobile. Uh, so these different flavors of modems only saw the bands for that one carrier. Now, because the modems see all the bands, uh, what, what makes the Avi West work where other products fail is it sees a band that that other product can't see. And a lot of times these lesser used bands are, are what saves the day in a crowded venue, or they're the lower, lower frequency bands that go longer distance, go through walls, go through obstructions better. So that's part of the special sauce. And then, you know, the software, the algorithm, the SST, uh, th that, that's an important part. Um, another thing we learned uh, I, I, for, with several customers, we learned the importance of having analog audio inputs. Uh, with the PGA, the, the top trace, that red uh, graphic that follows the ball when it goes through, on its arc through the air, that telemetry is sent to the truck or the production studio via an audio channel, an analog audio channel, that telemetry I guess it sends coordinates of where the ball is on the screen uh, through, the, through the telemetry. So that was a big pleasant surprise. And then also they didn't need like a video embedder to get audio into the bonded cellular product for the guys, uh, the operators just doing parabolic mics. So the smaller unit uh, with two cellular modems was used for, for audio only uh, connections. And then the flagship with eight cellular modems was used for the main video feeds. Uh, again, we talked about the, you know, the, the need for the frame accurate gen lock. Um, we're hoping the show comes back, but uh, we, the, this technology made the uh, live PD show possible. Again, same problem. Uh, multiple police cars roll up on, on an incident. You know, there could be four to six sets of cameras, uh, each with their own sets of microphones, all open at the same time. It'd be like, you're under arrest, you're under arrest, or they cut between scenes like we already saw that scene why is there why is it the camera going backwards so the, the gen lock and the lip sync is very very important uh, another critical thing with uh, pga was um they wanted to shade cameras through the through the the link and some cameras do not like any latency at all when it comes to ccu rcp or camera control um, what what the camera and the uh, CCU or camera control unit or the uh, remote control unit or RCP expect is the camera to be in the same studio, to be in the same building, and they're expecting it on a on a managed LAN or or a short cable in the studio. So what uh, we partner with a, a vendor by the name of Cyan View, and they just do camera control that's all they do and they're really really good at it so what they do is they they allow the camera to go over longer distances they allow the camera to systems to tolerate latency so if you're in in studio and it's a managed connection the latency is is uh, uh more manageable you know maybe 10 20 milliseconds you put a little gizmo on the camera called the 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 cio um, it just will do like a serial to IP camera conversion to get it over the network to the control room. The RIO is used for remote. The R, I believe, stands for remote. So that smooths out latency. So I'm any of you guys out there, uh, any of you guys and gals out there that have uh, done, you know, camera control and you've had a problem, a cable breaks. Some camera systems, when they lose connectivity with the RCP or the CCU, they go berserk. The, the iris will close, the iris will open. Um, so what CyanView does, the RIO actually mimics the, the RCP at the camera. So if the connection is interrupted or the latency is a little bit too long and the camera, would, if it's longer than the camera would tolerate, the RIO is, is, is emulating the RCP to keep the camera calm. And if the connection's interrupted, uh, the camera's like, what's my iris setting? What my, what's my iris setting? And the, the Rio would say, it's still 32. It's still 32. What, what's my pedestal level? It's still eight. It's still eight. So, so it keeps the camera 
uh, calm. It, it maintains a constant connection. And the Rio is just communicating with the RCP for changes. Uh, is the camera operator opening the iris or closing it? Or is he changing the black pedestal? That kind of thing. Uh, and one RCP can control multiple cameras. So the PGA sets the cameras up based on, you know, the cloud cover, the exposure that day. They do some live changes, but they, they usually just set it and kind of forget it uh, unless there's something drastically wrong. Uh, uh, but you, you could shade in real time across the connection, but there would be, you know, 100, 150 millisecond latency in the shading. So you just want to bear in mind, you don't want to make sudden changes. You know, you don't want to overshoot it. Oh, it's too dark. Slowly bring it up. You know, don't, don't, don't. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I've done some amateur shading in, uh, at Saddleback Church here. I always shade as if the camera's live. I don't, I don't, you know, I just do subtle soft changes in case they cut to the camera. No one sees a, a sharp transition. So you see here, uh, uh, the Rio is on the camera side. Uh, there is a quarter 20 little mount on the bottom. So you could attach it to a, a hot shoe or an accessory shoe on the camera. PGA really loves it. And it works really, really well with the, uh, the Avi West technology. Uh, it goes through the Avi West data pipe. I'm sorry, data bridge. Uh, data bridge is what they call it. And it sets up like a virtual uh, VPN, a secure bonded cellular connection between the studio and the field. And the uh, Cyan View camera control goes over that connection. Uh, Avi West also has rolled out recently uh, return video. It comes out of an HDMI port on, on uh, all the field encoders. And you can have more than one return video. Now, you can't have more than one return video going to the same camera. But, you know, camera one could have program feed. Camera two could have teleprompter. So you could have different flavors. Or if you have two different sets of talent, in front of two different cameras in the field, you probably might want a different teleprompter for each for each uh, each talent uh, or whatever the case may be. Uh, Avi West also has a multi viewer function where that could be fed back as uh, as one of the returns. If somebody wants to see ISOs of all the cameras, you know it's common confidence, right? That the cameras are reaching the studio because I see the ISO, I see the multi view of all the ISO cameras coming back to me, so I know it's made a a round trip for confidence. Uh, Avi West supports all these different standards, uh, uh, both input and output. Their their stream hub is really aptly named. You know, calling it a stream your streaming hub, because it's not just a decoder, it's not just a receiver. You can take IP video in and out from any vendor, so it can take the top of the list is their proprietary SST, but this is how the Avi West engineers met the high vision engineers. Avi West did a really great implementation, robust implementation of SRT in their platform with the help of high vision. And I think when they were done with that project, hey, we like working with you guys and we're French Canadians and we speak French. Maybe it's a little bit different accent and you guys are French French. So why don't we work together? So I think that's how the happy marriage came about. But here's the cool thing. Even before the merger, you could send your SRT feed from your Makito to an Avi West Stream Hub because we can take SRT in. We can feed SRT out to the cloud. Or uh, uh, if we're working with AWS Elemental, they prefer SRT for the egress or for the distribution uh, 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 standard. Uh, that, SRT is, is one of their approved standards. So SRT is kind of the video over IP common language right now, common format. So uh, it really makes sense. Uh, then I mentioned the Stream Hub. Now the Stream Hub can be an appliance. It's just a, a server running uh, Linux, uh, but we spin it up in the cloud all the time. We can do parallel workflows, um, uh, stream to the studio and then hand off things to the cloud with IP outputs from the Stream Hub. So the SDI outputs could be feeding the more traditional workflow. The IP outputs could be going up to the cloud and working with vMix or Grass Valley AMP or Easy Live or Simply Live, whatever your preferred cloud uh, um, a solution might be. So a lot of things are, are, are done in hybrid, you know, uh, old, old school, new school uh, workflows, uh, in studio, in cloud type workflows. 
Uh, Avi, this slide's a little dated. Avi West it, is already doing NDI now for mm, a good 18 months. And WebRTC is being used. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that. That's, that's the, the, the video protocol uh, used in gaming. Um, it's uh, got pretty good video quality, but it's very low latency because in gaming you're, and you're interacting with your teammates, if there's latency, that'd be very bad. So it's a low latency, uh, yet still pretty good fidelity uh, protocol. Avi West has integrated that into their live uh, guest product, which I'll talk about. And SMPTE 2110 hooks uh, in, in and out of the Stream Hub are coming later this year. So that's coming soon. Uh, let me see. Oh, this is a good slide. Um, I hope you guys are okay. I, I know I said this was 20 minutes. I'm probably going to go about 45 if you're okay with that. Uh, if you have to jump off, I, I'm recording this so you can catch it later. So I'll tell you a story. You know, when we first started working uh, with the PGA, I'll usually use the PGA as an example, but, you know, all of our clients, they would get to a venue and they were like, oh, this lake has no Verizon or this golf course has no Verizon. Can you send 400 AT&T sims? And, you know, we would package them, send them out. They'd have to pull the Verizons out, put the AT&Ts in. Then they go to another venue. Oh, there's no T-Mobile because the old modems could only work with Verizon or, or, or only one carrier. Now, because Avi West uses these modems that, that can pick up any band, now we marry that with eSIMs and we marry it with SIMs that can work with any carrier. So uh, it, it, I'd use the PGA. They would get to a venue where there was only AT&T. Verizon and T-Mobile were not present. There's a dead spot. N not to pick on Verizon or T-Mobile. There's other venues where there's no AT&T. So we would, there would only be two SIMs for AT&T in the unit. So like they, they try to do the show on two SIMs, two modems. So six, four or six modems, depending upon the product, were wasted. Um, that doesn't happen anymore. You don't have to change the SIMs anymore. The unit will automatically find alternate carriers that are available. It'll scan for a better frequency band on any carrier and it's all automatic. So in that venue where there was only AT&T, uh, not having to change SIMs and not only being running on, on two modems, miraculously all the modems would connect to AT&T and they would find connectivity on the tower. Uh, so these eSIMs have been a huge help, uh, gives better reliability, better failover, uh, better redundancy, a better bit rate, better throughput. So it's been really, really uh, helpful for, for all of our customers. Uh, then here's, uh, here's a slide about the uh, remote interview solution. So again, this is the one that uses the WebRTC technology. So it's very, very simple. Uh, in, in the Avi West ecosystem, all that happens is you put the email address uh, of the uh, attendee of the remote worker, uh, the remote analyst, the mo remote host, whatever, uh, and you send them an email. They click the link and uh, their browser pops up. It uses their webcam. You could have a better camera. You know, if you had a, um, um, an HDMI capture card in your computer, or um, you know, NDI makes a, a virtual webcam bridge from NDI to a virtual webcam. So you could have an NDI camera. So you don't have to be stuck with a webcam or your, your little camera in your notebook computer. You could have a better camera nearby, assuming the guest has that ability to set up a camera. And it's all automatic. You know, you pick the camera, like a Zoom meeting, you pick the camera and uh, uh, the remote guest, they don't need any special software. It's all done in their browser. So it's a really, really great, simple workflow. You don't need to fly a technician to the site. I, I think people are more, you know, if they can see the person and hear them, I think viewers are typically less concerned about the fidelity of a person, a talking head. You know, we're not gonna run the Super Bowl through this connection with a lot of motion. But for, for an interview or talking head, it's, it's perfect and works really well. Customers really like it. And when they go live, they just appear as another input on the StreamHub receiver. So just like another camera coming in the field, it's like, oh, there's, our, uh, there's Becky, our commentator. She's up, boom. They work her into the workflow and uh, 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 it uh, works really nicely. So I have some other slides that I wanna share with you guys. Um, let me, um, I'm going to roll some videos now. 
Uh, here's my contact. I know a lot of you, you folks know me, but in case you don't know who I am. Oh, and I see Fallon has chatted you some links to some of the products I talked about. Thank you, sh thank you, uh, Fallon. Uh, here's my contact information. Um, I don't know if you can do a QR code of your screen. You might be able to. Uh, this will give you some down a download of uh, a post show. Uh, we're gonna we post the recordings and uh, I put the presentation online, so you'll be able to get everything I've showed you today. Uh, takes us about a week to produce everything and put it up online. So about a week, you can expect that. So let me close this and I'm gonna show you some, uh, some videos. Yeah, so so that was the Pro 460. That's the uh, the camera mount unit. Uh, if you have a bigger camera, it goes between the camera and the battery. I believe um, Avi West is one of the few vendors that mounts the unit on the camera. Or there is another system that goes on the camera, but it's enormous. It's very, you know, it's I want to say like four or five inches wide to to me. My, my dad used to make a joke when he worked at NBC. It's like just because you put a handle on the side of a refrigerator doesn't make the refrigerator portable. You know, uh, Avi West is nice, thin, uh, low profile. It goes between the battery and the camera. Um, and then you also saw the Rack 4. That's the rack mount version. Um, a lot of the systems out there, if a customer wants to put it in a rack, they put the portable unit on a shelf. And the, but then you have cellular modems inside of a rack. Uh, it's not, not an elegant solution. So Avi West really takes the effort to re-engineer the product uh, to make it suitable to go in a truck or in a rack uh, and then having remote antennas outside the vehicle or outside the rack uh, or a portable unit that goes on the camera or if, if it's a smaller camera, you, we do, uh, they, Avi West does provide uh, backpacks. Uh, here, let me show you um, another video. This is a good one about the data bridge. You can meet Avi West CTO. Let me share. Hello, I am Ronan Poulawek, Chief Technology Officer at Avi West. In this clip, I'm pleased to introduce the data bridge feature available on our Air and Pro 3 transmitters and our Stream Hub. This feature offers a high-speed mobile internet connectivity from everywhere, 
As an example, it allows you to remotely control any kind of IP-based equipment like PTZ cameras or camera control units. Camera selection and control can be fully managed from the remote studio through a reliable IP tunnel managed by our SST technology. The data bridge can operate in parallel to the live transmission to increase your operational efficiency and cost savings. The AVI West data bridge allows you to produce multi-camera live events from a centralized control room instead of using on-site production trucks. A reduced team is required on-site, which is key with today's physical distancing rules. Uh, Ronan is uh, the mastermind of all this technology. Uh, and, and the data bridge, that's the, that's the connectivity we use the, for the camera that PGA uses for camera control in conjunction with the Scion view. Hello, I'm Samuel Fleshaker, Senior Product Manager at Avi West. And today I'm pleased to introduce the video return feature recently released in our field encoders and transmitters. With the video return, the crews in the field are able to receive and watch a video coming from the studio through the networks also used by the live, I mean the cellular network, the satellite, or simply the internet. From the field, the setup is very simple. Our flagship Pro 3 Premium encoder transmitter is performing a live and is ready to receive a video return by connecting a small display on its HDMI output. No other configuration is required. It's plug and play. From the control room, the technician can feed a video to an AV West encoder, especially configured to generate a video return feed. When this feed is received by our StreamHub, it is automatically detected and can be forwarded to one or multiple field units by a simple drag and drop. From the field, the video return is immediately displayed on the screen and a dedicated icon indicates its presence on the interface. With AviWest, the video return is available in Full HD quality, 720p, 1080i and 1080p, at any time when a live is in progress or not. Wherever you are, thanks to our doubly awarded SST technology offering networks aggregation. You can forward the same video return to multiple devices or multiple video returns to different devices as well. There are many interests and applications for these features, such as watching Studio Live directly in the field, receiving teleprompting information, showing live feeds to interviewees, confidence monitoring, in a nutshell, simplifying the video production in the field. And all of that is possible with AV West.
Um, I wanted to keep this short and sweet. Let me see. Did you folks have any questions? If not, uh, let me see. Where do I get the questions? Oh, here we go. Well, it looks like uh, no questions. I mean, if you if you folks think of something later, uh, certainly visit vidovation.com. I know you folks get our emails. Some of you get our text messages. Uh, thank you for reading uh, our messages. Uh, if you ever need to opt out, there's always an opt out path uh, if you don't want to get something on your phone or texting. But thank you all for participating today. And uh, let us know if you have any other questions or if we can help you with your live production workflow. We're also doing a lot with scripted shows. You know, we, we think about this technology being used only for live. Um, um, a new kind of workflow, we kind of coined, uh, calling it uh, remote directing. Now, uh, maybe the director or a TD or a producer can't make it to a production site for a scripted show or a, a cinema production, et cetera. Um, the bonded cellular technology can be on the ARRI or RED camera, sending live feeds back to the studio. So executives don't have to wait for dailies at the end of the day to see how shooting went. They can watch individual ISO camera feeds or a multi-view feed and cellular technology can be used to bring that back. So uh, we didn't invent that idea. A customer came up with that. Say, hey, I'd like to eliminate having to do dailies or, um, or if it's a scripted show, the, the live stream, you know, it's going to be lower res. The editor gets the live stream uh, and starts editing a rough cut before the hard drives are overnighted or shipped back to the studio for the final production. So it can, it can help to uh, do a quicker production turn, start editing content sooner. Um, if, they, if the studio needs dailies, uh, they don't have to wait a couple of hours after they wrap for the day for someone to put the daily uh, dailies together. That, that could be done uh, uh, while, that, that could be started while shooting. So the, the sky's the limit. You'll, you may, some of you folks may invent a new application for it. So thank you so much. Have a great day and thank you for joining. Uh, we're doing tomorrow, we're having uh, VizLink Mobile Viewpoint as a guest. Uh, we're going to talk about their uh, AI camera control systems, number of different products that eliminate the need for camera operators. Nothing against camera operators, but not every production has the budget for that. So uh, we're going to talk about the, the V-Pilot, which is an in-studio multi-camera uh, uh, opera, uh, operaless operation, operaless. Uh, uh, eliminating camera operators in the studio. There's the IQ, IQ sports producer for uh, doing, uh, producing a sporting event without camera operators. And then finally is the trolley. Uh, the the uh, trolley uh, is great for um, uh, a talent doing, uh, 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 if you want a, a more of a broadcast quality from uh, a commentator's home or remote location. Uh, it's an integration of uh, a broadcast quality PTZ camera. It's got intercom IFB built in. It's got uh, streaming technology. So it's, it's a cut above li like live guest. Uh, uh, so so there, there's applications for that. And then on Friday, we're gonna talk to uh, Jesse Foster at uh, Multidyne. We're gonna talk about fiber optics. We're gonna talk about, there's a big trend now to do live production with larger sensor cameras. People want a cinematic look for their live. So uh, uh, RED cameras, RE cameras uh, being used for live broadcast production and the Multidyne camera back technology uh, turns these cinema cameras into broadcast cameras to bring them into a broadcast workflow. So that's on Friday. And, and stay tuned for other webinars this summer. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a great day. Thanks for joining. And uh, keep an eye out for a copy of the recording. Thanks so much.